Should you contribute to an IRA, even if you can't deduct your contribution? Should you contribute to a non-deductible IRA? I've got three reasons when you should and why you should. That and more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. So in the scenario where you're trying to pack as much money as possible into tax shelters, which really should be all of our strategy, when you're saving up for retirement and you're investing for your financial future, the very first thing you're going to want to do is identify what your tax shelter strategy is, like how you can invest and save up for, your, for the long term using tax sheltered and tax advantaged accounts. Why? Because doing so allows your dollars to grow without being encumbered by Uncle Sam reaching his greedy hand in there and pulling some of the dollars out. And when those dollars that Uncle Sam does not get are able to grow and then compound and then interest on interest and growth on growth, right? You can see how that can, can snowball and really build up, uh, build up fast over, over the long term. And so having the right tax shelter strategy is extremely important and it's a vital piece of having a successful financial plan. So oftentimes, sort of the, the grassroots is fund your 401k, maybe fund a, a Roth IRA, maybe fund an HSA. And we love all of those. And when you sit down with your CFP and you look at your comprehensive financial situation, you'll identify which of those makes the most sense and to what degree. All right, so the strategy that we love to do is max out your 401k, so contribute as much as you can, then max out your Roth, then match, max out your HSA. And that, to some that might say, wow, I don't have that amount of resources. I know, so get started, let's go. Get started, you can do it, do as much as you can, do the right amount for you and your financial plan. But if you have those resources, max your 401k, max your Roth, max your HSA, voila. That, that in many cases will get the job done, you're maximizing your tax shelters. But what if you earn too much money to make a Roth IRA contribution? There are limits on how much modified adjusted gross income, adjusted gross income you're allowed to have and still be able to contribute to a Roth IRA, okay? So married filing jointly for 2022, it's around 204,000. Um, 2023, it's around 214,000, 218, I believe, somewhere in there. Um, it, single uh, single filers, it's around 130, 140, okay, depending on the year. Married filing separately, it's 10 grand. 10 grand. Essentially, if you're married filing separate, you can't contribute to a Roth. So in that scenario, and it, you're maxing, maxing out your 401k or your retirement plan through work, and you still have more you want to contribute, maybe need to contribute for retirement, and you can't do the Roth, what else do you do? Well, absolutely the HSA, but should you fund an IRA. Well, I'm going to say yes, you should if it fits in your financial plan and you're working with your CFP. But if you make too much to fund a Roth and you've got a retirement plan available to you at work that you're funding, you can't, you can't deduct your IRA contribution either. So this question then becomes, if you can't contribute to the Roth because you make too much money, should you fund your IRA even if you can't deduct it? Now again, it, 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 the answer is in the context of your entire financial life and looking at all six areas of your financial plan. You'll know, you'll work with your CFP and they'll help you figure out, yeah, you should do that or no, you shouldn't, those dollars should go somewhere else. Sometimes I think the habit is, well, I maxed up my 401k, oh, I can't do my Roth, okay, I guess I'm done. I, I, no, I would, I would push a little bit on that. There are significant reasons, there are good reasons to contribute to your IRA even if you can't deduct it. And the number one reason is to consider doing a backdoor Roth strategy. We've talked about that a lot. Your brain was already probably going there. That's not the only reason, by the way. Um, the backdoor Roth is you make a contribution to your IRA, but you can't deduct it. And then you convert those dollars, those after-tax dollars, you do a Roth conversion from your IRA to your Roth, those dollars get into your Roth and voila, you've just effectively got money into a Roth IRA just via two steps instead of one. The risk with that is if you already have an IRA with pre-tax money in it, you can't contribute after tax and then just move the after tax money over to the Roth. 
it's got to be proportionate. Basically, once you contribute after-tax money into your IRA, your entire IRA, all of your IRA is not separate. All of them are aggregated. And if 5% of your total IRA balance is after-tax, then when you do a Roth conversion, only 5% of the after-tax money will go over to the Roth. The rest of it will be pre-tax money, and you'll have to pay tax on that Roth conversion. Maybe you want to do that, but it gets a little messy. But if you don't have pre-tax IRA dollars already, doing a non-deductible IRA contribution via doing a backdoor Roth makes a ton of sense. The second reason though, even if you say, well, I, I do, I have a lot of pre-tax IRA dollars, so much so that if I contribute after tax to my IRA proportionately, it's gonna be very little, a small amount of my overall aggregated IRA balance will be after tax. So if I do a Roth conversion, I'm gonna be doing, you know, and most of it will be taxable. I don't, I don't really wanna do that. That doesn't make sense in my overall financial life. Should I still contribute to my IRA and even if I can't deduct it? I would argue yes. Again, it's gotta fit in your overall financial plan, makes sense with your CFP and your tax strategy, but yes, Yes, I would, and why? Because of those dollars then, the money that you contribute to your, to your IRA, 6,000 or 7,000, 6,500 or 7,500 next year, um, that money then gets to grow tax sheltered. It gets to go tax sheltered. And then when you retire and you start pulling dollars out, that after-tax money comes out and you don't have to pay tax on it again. The growth on that after-tax money will come out and will be taxable as ordinary income. And so you'll, you'll wanna be mindful of that. And you might be thinking, some of you really sophisticated might be thinking, well, wait a second, the growth is gonna be taxed at ordinary income versus if I just put that money in an individual account, the growth will be taxed at capital gains rates. I, capital gains rates are gonna be better than ordinary income. I should not contribute to the non-deductible IRA. And I would say, wait a second, because when you invest in that individual account, all the dividends, all the capital gain distributions, anytime you change your investment, Uncle Sam's gonna reach his hand in there and pull out some tax. Versus in the IRA, every time you make a change, anytime there's a capital gain, anytime there's a dividend, it's all sheltered. It's all sheltered from Uncle Sam. And therefore, that tax sheltering is, I would argue, depending on your situation, worth considering and worth contributing to the IRA, even if you can't deduct it. And then the final reason, and this is sort of advanced, advanced calculus here, the final reason why if you make too much money to fund a Roth IRA, you should consider funding your IRA even if you can't deduct it, is some of you may be eligible for an advanced strategy where you're funding that each and every year. So now you've got a, a chunk of after-tax money in your IRA and right before you retire, you push your IRA into your 401k. If your 401k allows in, uh, you know, incoming rollovers, okay, you roll over your IRA into your 401k. The reason you don't do that right away is because you want to continue to fund it and you like having the investment flexibility that the IRA offers and you have more access to your IRA during your working career or before you retire than you would a 401k. But you fund your IRA with after-tax contributions all along while you can. Um, you then, right before you retire, roll that into your 401k, and then at retirement, you roll your 401k out to your IRA. Now, why would you do that? Because your 401k, rolling it out to your IRA, allows you to roll over the after-tax portion directly into a Roth. And so it allows you to do this late in your career, right at retirement, backdoor Roth conversion. And voila, all of that after-tax money then lands in your Roth IRA at retirement and is able to grow tax-free for the rest of your life. All right, so we went from basic to, yeah, makes sense, to advanced. Should you, here's the question, should you be funding an IRA even if you can't deduct it? In many cases, and I just gave you three reasons why you should, but you've gotta work with your certified financial planner. This is not advice, this is just ideas for you to consider. Work with your certified financial planner. Make sure they're not just helping you with investments. They've gotta be helping you with your tax planning, helping you with your cash flow planning, helping you with your retirement planning, all six areas of your financial life. And then they're gonna help guide you through whether you should do that or if you're stopped out of the Roth, whether those dollars should go somewhere where else. If you don't have a CFP on your team that can help you with all that, contact one on my team. Find us online, corhorn.com. That's corhorn with K, wisemoneyshow.com. You can find us there as well, or give us a call, 574-247-5898. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.